Okay, so I'd say from a tactical standpoint, um, whatever it is that you're working on, uh, the most important thing that you can do is, is gain traction with the product. So whatever that means for you, right? Whether that's um, letter of intent from a customer, if you're B2B, or pre-orders from a customer, if you're direct to consumer. Uh, proof points are the fundamental, most valuable thing you can do. Uh, I guess second, from a tactical standpoint, I would say that when you're uh, launching a business, a startup, um, there's not really, you don't, so in, if you look at like sports, I'm not much of a sports person, but if you look at sports, uh, there's progressions of, of the game, of, of levels of the game, right? So you start maybe in elementary school or, and you go through the different schools, you get to college and there's even different levels within college and then there's minor leagues and major leagues, right? And so you kind of get this, uh, this bring up progression into this, uh, this, this uh, pinnacle of competition. One of the challenges with a, and maybe this isn't gonna be very inspirational, but one of the challenges with a startup is that you're competing against everybody. You're competing at the pinnacle of that, of that category, right? And so if your job is to compete against uh, Apple, or, or if you have a product that competes with Apple, well, Apple's your competition. And so there's a lot of advantages that startups have. You can move fast, you can be nimble. Um, you don't have to deal with the bureaucracy of a large organization. So you can make decisions quickly, you can pivot. Um, but the, the tactical point that I'm getting at here is you need to just remember that you're competing in, uh, in a space where nobody cares about your size. They just want the good product and the good experience or whatever it might be that you're, that you're selling to them. And so you need to not only worry about your product, which is of course critical and the most critical thing, but all the other functions of the business. So there's many functions of the business. Um, there's product and marketing and creative and creative and especially in this building, there's a lot of creative. Um, there's uh, finance and operations. And so you have all these different functions and you need to make sure that all those functions are being executed upon. A lot of times people wanna focus on the, you know, if you're a product person, you wanna focus on your product, or if you're a business person, you wanna focus on the sale or growing the business, but you need to focus on all functions because um, without that, you can't, you just, you can't build uh, a larger organization. You can't build an organization that, that's able to, to operate and succeed. So each one of those categories, you always wanna be hypercritical about and think, how can I do this to the best of our ability to a world-class level if possible, um, and, and always kind of maintain that mindset of how do I always level up each function of the business um, to the best of your ability based on the resources and the team skill sets and things like that. Um, so that's more tactical and then uh, methodically, I would say um, when you start a business, the you're gonna spend uh, potentially five years or 10 years or maybe even a few decades of your life on it. Um, and so when you're thinking about a business that you want to start, there's really, in my mind, there's, there's kind of two, there's a lot of things that you really want to consider, but there's two thresholds that I think are the most important things to consider to decide to dive in, considering how long of your, you know, of your future it might absorb. And so those two things are one, you wanna make sure whatever you're doing, unless you're looking for a quick buck, which is totally fine if that's your goal, but you wanna make sure that what you're doing has a place in the world in the future. So five years out or 10 years out or, or even a few decades out, is it still an impactful product? Is there still, or the evolution of whatever you're doing, is it impactful? Does, does the world still want it? Does it belong in a world of the future? Um, and so trying to have that kind of foresight to make sure that whatever you invest your whole life into and possibly the lives of your co-founders and employees and and the resources of your investors and the strategics and everything, before you make that big commitment, uh, is this something that has that longevity? Uh, so that's one piece. And then the second piece is, there are uh, infinite ways to become incredibly successful in this world, um, which is one of the, the, the beautiful things about uh, being an entrepreneur is you can literally do anything. And so there's definitely a lot of trendy items and things that are, um, particularly appealing because they might be the thing of the moment or um, just have a lot of visibility on them or, or just a large market size. And those things are great and I don't discourage anybody from uh, going down a path that uh, is uh, like a chat GPT type of thing, which is obviously one of the most uh, influential things amongst the entrepreneurial community and, and uh, um, just the tech community in general. 
But the point I'm trying to get to is you need to do something that you truly care about, that you're truly passionate about. I know it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but at the end of the day, when you start a business, uh, there's going to be many dark days, many dark years possibly. Uh, there's going to be a lot of times where you think you're succeeding and then you're crashing and then you th think you're succeeding again and then you're almost bankrupt. Um, even you look at like a Tesla. So Tesla, of course, I know it's you know, almost is quite controversial at the moment, but it's still one of the most valuable companies on the planet right now. They almost went bankrupt in 2018. Apple, which is the most valuable company on the planet, almost went bankrupt when Steve Jobs left and then ultimately he came back and turned it around. But even the largest companies in the world are at risk of, of catastrophic events. And in order to make it through those catastrophic events and lead your team through it, you need to really believe in what you're doing and really care about it um, because that could happen months from now, years from now, decades from now. Thank you.